How's it going guys? In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how we can create a password generator in SwiftUI using the MVVM architecture. And the application is going to look like this one over here. So you're going to be able to customize it to decide whether you want it to include symbols, uppercase and the character count of the password. And then we're going to also get this small lock over here that tells us how secure the password is. So if we go ahead and include uppercase and click on generate password, we're going to get a yellow lock because it's a little bit more secure than the green lock. Otherwise, if we go ahead and increase the character count to 14 and generate a password, we're going to get a red lock because that is the most secure password we can generate with this application. And if we disable all of the options and change it all the way down to around seven, it's going to give us a gray lock telling us that this is not secure at all and that anybody can guess this in a matter of hours. So it's a very cool application. It's very simple to make and it also helps you understand the basics of MVVM. So let's get started immediately by creating a new project in Xcode. And the very first thing we want to do is create the password model. So click on your project folder and hold command plus N so we can create a new Swift file. Click on next and call this one password model and then go ahead and click on create. Now we're also going to create a folder and this folder is going to be called model. Then go ahead and drag the password model inside there. Now inside this file, we can go ahead and structure the password. So struct password, which is going to conform to identifiable and codable. Then we can go ahead and create an ID so it can be identifiable and we can just insert it into any list we desire. And we need to go ahead and provide the password, which will be of type string, followed by contains symbols of type Boolean and var contains uppercase of type Boolean as well. So this is a great basis because in the future, if you want to save these passwords, all you have to do is insert it into some sort of database and it's going to conform to identifiable and codable. So that's going to be very simple to do. But next we have to go ahead and create a computed property, which is going to be the strength caller. And it's going to return a caller. And we're going to be using the caller to show the strength of the password to show exactly what color the lock should be. And we want this to be simple. So we're just going to create a computed property inside the password struct. And inside here, go ahead and create a strength variable, which will be set to zero initially, and a var of caller, which we're going to use later. If contained symbols is true, then we want to go ahead and add to the strength plus equals one. If it contains uppercase, we're going to do the same thing, strength plus equals one. If the password dot count is more than 12, then we can go ahead and add to the strength plus equals one. Else if the password dot count is less than eight, we're going to say that's actually very weak and that's bad. So we're going to deduct from the strength minus equals one. Now that we have a scoring system to determine how strong the password is, we can go ahead and create a switch statement. So switch on strength. And first we want to handle what happens if it has a score of one, so case one. And here we're just going to say the caller will be set to dot green because it's fairly weak. Case two is going to be set to dot yellow and case three will be set to dot red. And we have to provide a default statement of course, which will be caller.gray. And then we have to go ahead and return the caller. So of course you can insert whatever colors you want inside here. For some, it makes more sense to make the strongest password green because that's kind of a positive reinforcement to you doing something good. Others might like red because it's a lot stronger. It usually says something is very robust. So that's absolutely up to you what kind of colors you want to use. I'm just going to use these ones for this example. Next, let's go ahead and create another folder. And this one will be called the view model. And we can actually drag this above the assets and the view model right above the model. Now inside here, we're going to hold command plus N to create another Swift file. And it's going to be called content view model. So inside here, we're going to create an extension on content view and it's going to have a class inside of view model, which conforms to the observable object protocol. And we have to go ahead and create four published variables. So the first one is going to be a published var of passwords, which is going to be of type password in an array. And that's going to equal an empty array initially, then add published var 
contains symbols, which will be set to true initially at published var with AEP, contains uppercase, which will be set to false, and at published var length, which will be set to 10. Now we want to create an initializer where we can actually insert some sample data into password, but right now we do not have that method yet, so we can just leave it empty. But this whole view model is just going to have one function, and the function is going to be called create password. And we can insert it immediately into the initializer, so we have at least one password to show to the user. Inside here, we need to get all the characters that we want to use for our password, so let alphabet equal all the letters of your alphabet. So I'm just going to paste this in here, and then let the base characters equal the alphabet plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. If contain symbols is true, then we want to add to the base. So base plus equals and add the characters and symbols that you want. I'm just going to add these default symbols, which I randomly pressed from my keyboard earlier. And if contains uppercase is true, we're going to go ahead, say base plus equals alphabet dot uppercase. That's the only reason I created the alphabet earlier. And base has to be a variable, of course, so that we can change it later. But now we have to go ahead and create a for loop, so for nothing in zero to the range of less than the entire length. And let's random character equal base dot random element. And inside here, we need to create a new password. So go back to this section over here and create var new password which will initially be set to nothing. And here we can type in new password plus equals the string of the random character. So it's going to continuously append one of these symbols, one of these numbers, or one of these letters to this new password until we have a full password of the total length that we've decided to give it. And we also need to go ahead and make sure that this is non-nil. So add that exclamation mark here and the error should go away for this string conversion. But let's go ahead and create the password now. So let password equal a password with the password contains symbols and contains uppercase. So here we need to insert the new password. Contains symbols will be contains symbols and contains uppercase will be contains uppercase. Now all that's left is to insert the password into the list. So go ahead and type in with animation and passwords dot insert the password at the index of zero. And this whole function will take care of inserting a new password each time we click on the generate password button with the settings that we've decided to include. Next, go ahead and click on your project folder, hold option command plus N to create a new folder. And we're going to call this one view. Go ahead and drag your content view into that one and drag the view right below the demo app. And inside this folder, we're going to go ahead and create another Swift file. And this one's going to be called view modifiers, which are kind of like helper functions for our content view. So inside here, we need to import Swift UI and it's going to be an extension on view. And the first function is going to be called center H, which is going to return some view. And it's going to consist of an H stack with a spacer, the element we want to insert and another spacer. So this is just going to horizontally place whatever view we decide to attach this modifier to. And we also want to create a add navigation view modifier, which will take a title of type string and return some view. And here we create the navigation view, insert self into it and add a navigation title which will just be set to the title we give it. So these are just both helper functions, which of course can be put inside the content view, but I want to separate that because it becomes quite repetitive. But next, let's go to our content view, and inside here, we're going to finish the application. So there's actually not that much left that we have to do, but let's get started with creating a state object so we can reference our view model, so private var view model, which is going to equal the view model. So we can access the class and the variables inside it and the functions. Next, we need to get rid of this text view and provide a form with a section, which is going to have a title of options. And first we want to create a toggle with symbols, which is going to be bound to VM 
dot contains symbols. Then let's go ahead and create a toggle with uppercase and is on is going to be bound to vm dot contains uppercase and we can minimize this sidebar so we have some more space. Then let's go ahead and create a stepper with a character count which will be set to the view model dot length and we need to provide a value which is going to be bound to vm dot length and we want to set a range so in the range of 6 to 18 because it's unlikely to have a password that's less than six characters and more than 18 characters is also quite unmanageable. But of course you can change that range to whatever you want. Now we need a button that will generate the password for us. Generate password. And the action is going to be set to vm.createPassword. And as I mentioned earlier, as you can see, the password button is on the side, which I believe looks quite ugly. So go ahead and just type in dot center h and it will center it for us while maintaining a very clean code structure. Under this section, we're going to create one more section, which is called passwords. And this is going to present all the passwords that we have generated to this point. So here, go ahead and create a list with vm.passwords, and we have to pass in password in, and we're going to provide an h stack with the text of backslash password.password. .password with a padding and also with text selection set to dot enabled. So the user can just hold down on this text and it's gonna give you options such as copy or share so they can easily put that where they need to put it. Then go ahead and create a spacer and on the other side, an image with the system name of lock.fill with a foreground caller set to password dot strength caller. And finally, the last thing we have to do is add the navigation view. So dot add navigation view with the title of iPassword. As you can see in our preview, everything is in place and we can actually go ahead and run the application. So as soon as the application loads, we can go ahead and try to generate a few new passwords. At the moment, we only have one, which is the first password that generates as soon as our view model is initialized. But if we go ahead and generate another password, it's going to pop in with a nice animation we can change the count to something low and generate another password. And since it's super weak, it's going to get only a gray rating, which is very poor. But if we add the uppercase and change this to 13 characters, it's going to get a red lock because that's a very strong password. Now let's go ahead and remove the symbols and generate another password. And we're going to get a yellow lock, which is somewhat good, but not too good. So. We can change this to as many characters as we want until 18 and then it blocks if we add the symbols we can go ahead and do that and we'll get a very strong password and that concludes making this ipassword app it introduced a very light version of mvvm so you're going to be able to use that in further projects and with that being said guys as always thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video